Let's catch up with the Shadow Communications Minister, Sarah Henderson, who joins us live from Geelong. Good to talk to you again, Sarah. Um, I noticed you've been out celebrating the ABC's uh, 90th <laughs> birthday. You went to Ultimo for their, their big dinner. The Prime Minister spoke. Uh, Ida Butro spoke. Uh, the Managing Director, David Anderson. They didn't invite me, but it's, it's nice they invited you. <laughs> Well, Chris, uh, good afternoon. And yes, I was there on Friday night celebrating 90 years of the ABC. Uh, probably not quite as good as the 60th celebration I went to when I was very young, of course. But it was it was great to, to get together and celebrate the ABC. Uh, we did hear some fairly one-sided speeches, including, of course, from the Prime Minister, who didn't actually realise that the ABC still has a very strong voice in the Pacific, courtesy of um, the funding that we have delivered, uh, some $3.3 billion over three years is the current uh, funding package. Uh, but uh, it was great to uh, get out and celebrate a great Australian institution, uh, although, of course, it does have some flaws. The Prime Minister was very political, though. He was sort of saying it's terrible form to attack the ABC because that, uh, that, that's a threat to its independence, when most of the attacks against the ABC, if because it's not being as objective as an independent as it should be, um, shouldn't the ABC be a little bit more robust, able to listen to criticism and respond to it? It shouldn't be immune from it. Look, that's absolutely right. Uh, I think the ABC has been highly sensitive when it has been properly criticised and it has made some very serious mistakes. And it take, keeps on talking about the fact that um, it wants to be an editorially in independent, and of course that's the case. But it doesn't mention that it has a statutory obligation to be impartial and accurate according to the objective standards of journalism. And so that's a very fundamental uh, legal obligation on the ABC. We don't see the ABC accounting for it. We don't see the ABC measuring that very important obligation. I think they could do much more in that regard to help to build trust in the ABC. Uh, but we did have some quite one-sided speeches without probably enough recognition of the, of the many important things the Coalition did when we were in government, including, of course, delivering a very substantial package for regional journalists and, of course, the News Media Bargaining Code, the deal between Facebook and Meta, which dragged those big tech giants to the table and delivered a very substantial nest egg to the ABC and all media organisations around the country. That's the biggest gift the coalition has ever given the ABC is dragging them into that net and that, they'll get money out of that for in perpetuity. Um, but, you know, did they not ask you to speak? I mean, that would have been a good way to recognise their non-partisanship, to have the Shadow Communications Minister there and speaking at the event as well. No, I wasn't invited to speak. I was disappointed. There were many uh, famous ABC faces who flew in from around the country. You know, people like Kerry O'Brien was there, Sarah Ferguson, uh, um, the, the wonderful co um, host of Hard Quiz, uh, Tom, who was uh, I love. Um, many great faces. They weren't acknowledged. That was disappointing. People like Pip Courtney. Uh, Pip has done the most amazing job hosting Landline for so many years, such an incredible program for regional Australia. Uh, that probably didn't get enough recognition. Radio didn't get enough recognition. But in any event, uh, they can always do better on their 100th anniversary birthday party. Well, let me editorialise a little bit and just put up here something of uh, Ida Buttrose's speech where she was responding to attacks on ABC journalism. She said, what nonsense. And she said, just look at the work of reporters like Mark Willisey, Louise Milligan, mind you, Laura Tingle, Patricia Carvelis and Anne Connolly, fearless and tireless, resolutely independent. Louise Milligan, I mean, honestly, that just gives the game away. They should be trying to deal with her journalism and apologise for it. Uh, uh, and instead they, they hail her as, as one of their bastions of independent journalism. And while we ponder also the ABC and their climate activism flying everyone to their party from around the country, they obviously didn't worry about their carbon footprint, I need to move on because we're nearly out of time. And I want to ask okay. you about your thoughts about your Senate colleague... Jacinta Nampajimpa Price, and, and the way uh, Peter Fitzsimons in particular seems to think it's his duty to tell her what to think about Indigenous affairs. Look, I think uh, Peter Fitzsimons is absolutely out of order. His behaviour towards Jacinta has been appalling. I've seen the text messages. They were really offensive. They were threatening, uh, very, very inappropriate 
Uh, I am really, I mean, she is incredible. She is a warrior. Uh, she is independent. She is a great voice for Indigenous Australians. But she's also not into virtue signalling. And, you know, she's made that very, very clear. And so I am very proud of her for standing up when she felt bullied and treated disrespectfully. And there is no doubt that she was treated badly. I think, Chris, that Peter Fitzsimons should apologise and he should also release the tape of the interview so that all Australians can judge how he spoke to Jacinta. Yes, spot on. I'm all for that transparency. Let's hear the tape. That'd be great. Thanks for joining us, Senator. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Great, Chris. Thank you. Senator Harris, Sarah Henderson there, who's the Shadow Communications Minister.